public urge to report not only crime but rogue police actions. Mothers in Yalibu ready to sell produce to city. And PNG hunters confident of defending title. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Saturday's news. Assistant Commissioner of Police Northern Region Peter Guinness is urging lay residents to use the lay police toll-free number not only to report crimes but also to report unethical behavior by police officers. Mr. Guinness says it is important to know what police officers are doing whilst on duty and those reported will be dealt with accordingly. The vehicle has toll-free numbers on and if there is any uh, things that they are doing outside of what they are supposed to do, they call the toll-free number and we will want to know uh, what police uh, personnel are doing. Not only in the police vehicle but any other police officers that they see are not uh, behaving. A woman driver was arrested and charged for allegedly being involved in an accident that cost the lives of three people. Lorraine Quarara was arrested, charged and locked up at the Barocco Police Cell by the National Capital District Traffic Unit. According to police, she lost control of the vehicle allegedly whilst under the influence of alcohol and overturned three times opposite the Sir Manasupe house at around 4 a.m. She was charged for negligent driving causing deaths and one for dangerous driving causing injuries under the Road Traffic Act. The Lay Metropolitan Command was presented a new vehicle by the Australian Federal Police yesterday. Assistant Commissioner of Police Northern Command Peter Guinness thanked the AFP for their continuous support, saying this will boost policing in the city. Twelve officers were also awarded for their service in the Solomon Islands between 2003 and 2013 in Lay yesterday. On Friday afternoon, Police officers gathered at the Lay Metropolitan Command to witness the gifting of a new police vehicle and a medal presentation ceremony. Present was the Australian Federal Police Deputy Commissioner Operations, Neil Gagan, and the Assistant Commissioner for Police, Northern Region, Peter Guinness. After inspecting the parade, the officers were addressed and the vehicle presented to ACP Guinness. I hope that this wonderful partnership will continue between PNG and Australia for many years to come. And uh, the vehicle has been, was given at the right time. And uh, they will be using the vehicle to uh, serve the people of uh, Lay City. Twelve serving and retired police officers were also awarded with medals. These are officers who served in the Solomon Islands, providing policing support during the Solomon Islands crisis between 2003 and 2013. Yesterday, they were rewarded for their efforts. The ceremony parade where we gave people that had served with the Regional Assistant Mission in Solomon Islands medals for the recognition of their service in the Solomon Islands. Um, that's great to do that. And what I think was really good with this particular medal ceremony is that we were able to do it with the community present. I think that's fantastic. And that shows great leadership by the Assistant Commissioner Guinness. Amongst the 12 recipients was retired Chief Inspector Kathy Dobb, who was one of the first six pioneer female police officers in the RPNGC. I really appreciate uh, being one of the recipients of this uh, medal. Uh, in fact, I was the oldest policewoman and I was um, really happy to see that uh, I was selected uh, to be the first uh, policewoman uh, commander uh, to Ramsey with uh, other squad men, uh, policemen and women. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. Lawmaking process of the National Parliament was further strengthened this week. From 14th to 16th August, over 20 Parliament staff were trained by parliamentary experts on legislative practices and processes from the New Zealand and Queensland parliaments facilitated by UNDP. National parliamentary staff who work in key divisions that process proposed bills gain specialised skills to carry out their work. Clerk of the National Parliament, Mr Vela Conivaro, said this training is needed as there is an acute need for skills in legislative drafting and understanding on lawmaking processes. UNDP Papua New Guinea's acting deputy representative, Ms Julie Bukikun, said UNDP has been supporting PNG 
and other Pacific parliaments to strengthen their capacity to effectively undertake its legislative oversight and representative functions. You're with National MTV News. We have more of today's other stories waiting on the other side of this message. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The Royal Australian Navy ship HMAS Success is currently in Rabaul, East New Britain as part of Indo-Pacific Endeavour 2018, Australia's major annual maritime activity in the region. In Rabaul, personnel visited schools and health facilities to carry out repairs, maintenance work and provide medical support to local communities. The deployment is to promote security and stability in the region through engagement, training and capacity building. The arrival of HMAS success in Rabaul makes Papua New Guinea the only country in the world to receive consecutive visits under the Indo-Pacific Endeavour. HMAS Adelaide stopped over in Port Moresby last year as part of IPE 2017. Grade 11 and 12 students of Kop Kop College attended a special excursion to Motopori Island for, an, for a historical lesson yesterday. The students met pioneer professor of archaeology from the University of Papua New Guinea, Professor Jim Allen, and his group of final year archaeology students. The students were on a history and geography excursion for a closer look to witness the excavation of clay pot pieces. The students were taken on a tour of the research facilities by acting director of the research center, John Genolagani. This island holds great historical and biological significance for the country. The final draft of the national constitution was compiled here. Now straight out of Yalibu Pangia and onto your dinner plate. The first container of fresh fruit and vegetable will be soon in stop and shop stores in Port Moresby. Brought to you by Mothers from Yalibu Pangia, an initiative by Mama Healthy Mama Association that began three years ago by Ruth Undi. Adelaide Sirix Curry reports. Three years ago, Mama Helping Mama Association was created with the hope and vision to provide a way of income to mothers in rural villages in Yalibu Pangia. Today, founder Ruth Undi said her vision has finally come true. Now, Jenny blow me today, it's me looking most and me hot talk. Now, this is a container comes up. Now, belly see blow me, now me got big lamb mamas. Look, Karen, this is a project to come. Country by look him now. Karam container come to legal place like Yalibu. Amy had. Had. One black company only call him at Tinika. Tinika, you go log in to big black supermarket. Tinika company stop. All have a supply in Lomania. But Amy business. Yalibu Panka, you are in this la. Amy business, Amy, the companies are making money now. But Mama will be Mama. Amy in a business blow me. Amy association. Owned by you, Blow Mama. And company Blow Old Mama on the eastern side. City Pharmacy Limited has contracted Mama Helping Mama to provide 13 tons of fresh fruits and vegetables to Port Moresby as a part of their local produce section. Undi says such contracts are hard to come by and encourage the people to go back to the land and meet the demand. One black, big black company. Every year, I'm so generate 200 and almost 300 million. 500 million. Now, CPL is so buying Kaiga in this country. Kaiga is my yard. Now, one black moon, I'm not talking about one black here. I'm so making 30 million. Because Papua New Guinea cannot supply Kaiga. Now, money is too long, and I'm so buying Kaiga in Australia, New Zealand. Now, 13 million, 13 million. M. Kaigablo Papua New Guinea, CPL Sabai. Carl talk, one blood talk, talk. Now you go all in spade now walk. You like him this la money, Kamlo Yalibu? Pankia, Eastern side? Me ask him, you blood. Yes. This la money can come. Suppose, container, I'm like him, two blood container. Hey, money, but Kamlo pocket blow you now. Meanwhile, Yalibu Pangia DDA CEO committed 200,000 kina to the association. I'll be mama, pledge blood to the Prime Minister, 200,000 kina. Anything happens, we'll definitely deposit it into account. Advisor to the association, Carl Yalo, announced the education program the association will run. Uh, class uh, accommodation blood mama, 
20 black mama by sleep inside the school. So time mama I go uh, to school now, papa no beginning by go karam na, mama na go lose na gate na. So goodbye na, no, na bla day mbo na bloke mama eh. So mama I am by sit up inside the classroom na. One time all na bla Mary all sit down na, mbo la na mbo nubla something. Because how we no blow young black line to so. How we blow you me all up until you more get a mass la na mbo nubla something. Nubla we lo come up in good place in down blow you me long community blow you me. Cabbages, sweet potatoes, pineapples and carrots are a part of the first shipment with a container expected every week from the Mama Helping Mama Association supplying CPL. <laughs> Adelaide Syrox Curry National, MTV News. Trukai Industries Limited has launched its newest offering to the market, Hamamas rice. The rice is 100% homegrown in the Rangia Ampom village in Umi, Marba province. Trukai CEO Greg Worthington here said the rice is from 275 hectares of rain fed crop at Umi. He says the launch was a significant milestone for Trukai to see this homegrown rice as it has taken a lot of hard work by the Chingwam Rice Growers Cooperative. The proud CEO says Hamamas Rice complements the company's vision to grow and process locally grown rice. Trukai Hamamas Rice comes in one kilogram packs and will be sold in selected outlets in Port Moresby and Lee for 5 kina 20 a packet from next week onwards. A total of 1.5 million kina has been paid by the East Sipic Provincial Government for students in tertiary institutions. Tuition fees were paid to 35 different tertiary institutions for at least 1,500 students. East Sipic Governor Alan Bird says this is one of the government's priority areas for human resource development. Under this program, the Provincial Government pays 1,000 kina each for students per year. Most of the institutions receiving the payments are affiliated through the Higher Education Department. You're watching National AMTV News. Up next, we take a look at stories making headlines overseas. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, the bomb that was used in the Yemen bus bombing has been found to be U.S.-made. The same U.S.-made bomb have been used in other bombing attacks in Yemen. Every day, Zayd al-Humran visits the graveyard where his two little boys are buried. Today, he brought their five-year-old brother along. He's all Zayd has left. People were screaming out the names of their children. I tried to tell the women it couldn't be true, but then a man ran through the crowd, shouting that a plane had struck the children's bus. On August 9th, Zaid's son Osama filmed his class on their long-awaited school trip, a reward for graduating summer school. Within hours, and it had all gone horribly wrong. A plane from the US-backed Saudi-led coalition struck a bus carrying them. Dozens died. Some of the bodies were so mutilated, identification became impossible. All that's left are the scraps of school books, warped metal, and a single backpack. Eyewitnesses tell CNN this was a direct hit in the middle of a busy market. I saw the bomb hit the bus. It blew it into those shops and threw bodies clear to the other side of those buildings. We found bodies scattered everywhere. There was a severed head inside the bomb crater. This video of shrapnel was filmed in the aftermath of the attack and sent to CNN by contact in Sada. A cameraman working for CNN subsequently filmed these images for us. Munitions experts tell CNN this was a US-made Mark MK-82 bomb, weighing in at half a ton. The first five digits there are the cage number, the commercial and government entity number. This number here denotes Lockheed Martin, one of the top US defense contractors. We're at the forefront of the science that makes them real. This particular MK-82 is a paveway, a laser-guided precision bomb. It's targeting accuracy, a particular point of pride for Lockheed Martin. 
part of an arms deal with Saudi Arabia sanctioned and contracted out by the US government. So why does this matter? Because the devastation inflicted by the MK82 is all too familiar in Yemen. In March 2016, a strike on a market using the similarly laser-guided 2,000-pound MK84 killed 97 people. In October 2016, another strike on a funeral hall killed 155 people and wounded hundreds more. Then the bus attack on August 9th, where they're still counting the dead. The US doesn't just sell arms to the coalition in its battle against the Iranian-backed rebel Houthi militias. It provides intelligence, help with targeting procedures, mid-air refueling. President Obama blocked sales of precision-guided military technology to Saudi Arabia over human rights concerns. Six months later, under the newly elected Trump administration, then Secretary of State Rex Tillerson overturned the ban. Look, there's a balance that needs to be struck. The president also noted uh, that the Saudis have a right to defend themselves. They were being attacked uh, from across the southern border by Houthis who were aided by Iran and were launching rockets and missiles. What I would tell you is that uh, we certainly had, under the Obama administration's deep concerns about the way the Saudis uh, were targeting. And we acted on those concerns by limiting the kinds of munitions uh, that they were being given and, and stridently trying to argue for them to be more careful and cautious. Saudi Arabia denies targeting civilians and defended the incident as a legitimate military operation and a retaliatory response to a Houthi ballistic missile from the day before. When asked to comment on CNN's evidence, coalition spokesperson Turki El Maliki told us, the coalition is taking all practical measures to minimize civilian casualties. Every civilian casualty is a tragedy, adding that it would not be appropriate for the coalition to comment further while the investigation is underway. The U.S. wouldn't comment on the origins of the bomb, but the State Department is calling for a Saudi-led investigation, which the U.S. Defense Secretary supports. Wars are always tragic, but we've got to find a way to protect innocent in the midst of this one. Osama's cell phone footage is all that his father has left of the two boys. Their last happy moments. <laughs> Osama's father isn't optimistic that an investigation will change anything. In a country where loss has become commonplace, they aren't even praying for justice anymore. Just peace. Flooding in India has seen 324 people being killed as floodwaters are rising faster than the time people can escape. The state of Kerala has seen unprecedented flooding this year. In fact, I'm in one of the worst affected areas in Kerala. This is Patanam Thitta district. This is called a Pandalam, which is a small town here. And as you can see behind me, this entire place is completely flooded. Rivers are overflowing, dams are overflowing, which is why several districts in the state of Kerala uh, are underwater. As of now, rescue and relief operations are going on. Several um, uh, agencies from the center are doing the rescue operations, be it the Army, Navy, Coast Guard, or the NDRF. And even local police officials and fire rescue team are uh, doing these rescue operations for the last couple of days. But uh, the fact remains that this rescue operation has become enormously challenging because thousands of people are still stranded in many of the by lanes and in many of these isolated places and their homes are completely flooded. People are standing on terrace calling out for help. So that's the kind of situation that we are witnessing. Now the challenges that they are facing, I will just show you um, the situation here right now. This place is completely flooded and I will uh, take you through the challenges that uh, the officials here are facing in terms of uh, relief and rescue. Uh, uh, several challenges. Uh uh, be it a landing area for boats, uh, uh, be it uh, uh, the flow of water, which is extremely heavy. Because of that, none of these boats are actually uh, going into the places which are uh, severely affected uh, because of the heavy flow of water as well as lack of landing areas and lack of structure. So therefore, what um, the state requires is more services from the center, more armed forces to really come in and do the rescue and also chopper services. Uh, there are chopper services in several 
areas, but more choppers are required. Uh, right now, of course, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, has been holding talks with the uh, with the state government and has uh, assured all the help uh, to the state. But at this point, things are quite grim. Many thousands still stranded. We will have to see how this situation is going to pan out in the days to come. Now, while the world mourns the passing of the Queen of Soul, the Queen of Pop has marked a significant milestone. Madonna has celebrated her 60th birthday, and after four decades in the public eye, Her Majesty is still courting controversy. Contrary to her lyrics, it's hard to believe Madonna's been in the public eye for nearly four decades. And as she turns 60, the Queen of Pops reminding the world she still reigns supreme. Posting these photos on social media from Morocco, where she's celebrating her birthday. She moved to New York before she was 20 to work as a model, but music was her main love. Holiday was her breakthrough. Before hits like these made her a household name and an 80s icon. Never afraid to reinvent herself or to confront difficult issues, she became a figurehead for empowerment in the early 90s. By the end of the decade, she was writing about fame and parenthood. There's been plenty of controversy too, but her music still sells by the bucket load. More than 300 million records sold makes her the fourth best-selling music act of all time and worth more than $600 million. I think she's been influential, particularly in the music business, because she does change how she looks and how she sounds. So she sort of moves with the times. Um, and so I think she'll capture a new generation. There have been movies too, even a Golden Globe, as well as plenty of material for the celebrity gossip columns. But for her fans, it's only ever been about one thing. This is Saturday's news. We go for a break now, but when we come back, we have Chukai Sports for you. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The SPP and Hunters are aiming to finish in the top six of the ISC later to secure a home semi-final. Coach Michael Marum said despite a bad start to their 2018 season, the defending premiers are confident they will deliver in the final matches leading into the finals. The Hunters will play their final home game of the season when they take on Wynnum Manly tomorrow here in Port Moresby. This time last year, the Hunters were sitting on top of the Intra Super Cup ladder and already booked a home semi-final when they won the minor premiership. However, this year they're fighting to hold their sixth place position as a loss can see them missing out on the top six. Yeah, it's a big game for us. Uh, must win. Uh, uh, last home game, uh, last year we, we uh, also played them around this time and got the minor premiership. So. This time we're fighting for a spot in the uh, six. Uh. During this week's training, coach Michael Marum says he's keen on seeing his players put in a strong performance. Marum believes the key is in the Hunters' forward pack as they build on the momentum gained in their last two wins. We, we just want to get uh, our two points. Uh, you know, the Jets and uh, Falcons are still in the race. Uh, we can't afford to lose. They, if we, we lose our game, they jump uh, you know, ahead of us. So. It will be the Hunters' final home game, and halfback Watson Boas believes they will secure a final home semi-final match if they run over the Levin play Seagulls tomorrow. The boys will give their best for the last home game in front of their own crowd. And yeah, we'll bring back the first home semi if we finish fifth or third. So yeah, see you guys in the finals. It's going to be a, a big, big game for us. Uh, last home game for... Uh, for, for these players to uh, I know, uh, perform in front of their uh, own fans here. Uh, some of them might not play again next year or you know, might move on. So you know, this is probably the, the, the last chance for them to uh, you know, uh, you know, run out with the under scholars at the NFS year. 
Stanley Over Jr. National MTV Sports. Sports partnership is vital in bringing awareness on the Bougainville referendum, says a senior rugby league administrator in Bougainville. Development officer Gregory Ragu said sports partnership was crucial in preparation for referendum. Ragu was speaking during a ceremony that will pave way for partnership between the Bougainville Rugby Football League or BRFL and the Bougainville Rugby Union or BRU. During the ceremony, BRU presented 1,000 kina to BRFL in supporting its sister code to take part in the NGI trials, which begin next weekend in Kokopo, East New Britain. Ragu says uniting sporting codes in Bougainville partner in developing youths in preparation for the referendum on 15th June 2019. In boxing, fighters from the Milne Bay Kickboxing Club are gearing up for fights against a team from Northern Province. Following the hosting of club fights recently in Alutau, training for the selection team of fighters has started in both men's and women's divisions. Organizers told MTV training is progressing well, with the code also drawing attention in the province. The fights will be held in Alutau on the 16th of September, which coincides with the 50th golden anniversary for the local club. Meanwhile, Team Northern disclosed their preparations, but say the challenge will not be taken lightly. Up to 95% of Papua New Guinea's national volleyball team is dominated by players from the Vabukori Amateur Volleyball Association. The association was established in 1992 and has been running for 26 years. However, a major challenge faced by the association is lack of funding. Vabukori village, about 10 minutes from Port Mosby, is said to be a hot spot for volleyball. The local association, VAVA, has competed in the PNG National Volleyball Championships and won 13 consecutive titles consecutively. VAVA also boasts gold medal wins from the Arafura Games in 2009 and defended it successfully in 2011. In an interview with MTV Sports, President Dai Geno said that the only challenge the association is faced with is shortage of funds to run the association. Wawa is always supported by the village. We have our own fundraisers like um, Sing Sing in the village. We go fishing because we, uh, most of the players are fishermen. Yeah, but um, mostly we, we struggle. Despite being a force to be reckoned with in local and international volleyball, the association has been missing out on many international invites and representative games simply because they lack the financial capacity to appear at these friendlies. The association is now calling on business houses and other corporate agencies to help support the association in its operations. We believe we now have an um, administration or an executive that can um, um, really be um, transparent and uh, be accountable for all the sponsorship. They have also registered a five-year business plan with IPA to help provide realistic and functional development program for indoor and beach volleyball in the country. Rayon Lakingu, National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Kiwi star Lydia Ko's four shots off the pace after a 6 under 66 at the latest LPG event in the US. The 21 year old was consistent plus, except for one blip on the 16. This was one of those rare days for Lydia Ko when the putts dropped, even when she thought they wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> After a run of four straight birdies, the world number 17 was co-leader during the opening round in Indianapolis. A beauty. The only blemish came with a double bogey late in her round after some poor execution off the tee. Oof. Well, the trouble is that it started left and was fading. Just one, you know, kind of big mistake on 16, but other than that, I felt like I played really solid all round. His six under 66 puts her four shots off the lead in a tie for eight. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, fellow Kiwi Danny Lee opened the Wyndham Championship with a two under 70. Oh, good shot into this par four. But the story of the day was this man, Brent Snedeker, with an 11 under 59. Brent Snedeker is in the history books. 
the 2007 champion, becoming the 10th golfer in PGA history to go sub-60. To be able to step up there and execute when you need to and roll that putt in was such a cool feeling and uh, I got so excited, you know, goosebumps going crazy. After bogeying the first, the American went on a birdie blitz. A first nine, 32. As he ripped up the Sedgefield Country Club, his round was highlighted by an eagle on the sixth. Oh, just remarkable. Snedeker's effort just one stroke shy of Jim Furyk's record of 58 set two years ago. The Brisbane Broncos coaching merry-go-round seems to have been put to bed for now. Chief Executive Peter White has confirmed Wayne Bennett will remain at the club next year. Kiwi coach Michael Maguire was linked to the job, but he could still make a return to the NRL. The NRL rumour mill in overdrive. Australian media speculating on Wayne Bennett's replacement before he's even gone. It's been a circus the last week. South Sydney coach Anthony Seabold just one of many tipped to replace the super coach at Brisbane next season. But today, the Broncos CEO set the record straight. There's no risk to Wayne's contract at this club in 2019. White also addressing the rumours surrounding the Kiwis coach. Yesterday a story broke in relation to Michael Maguire coming to our club on a three-year contract. That story's not true. That doesn't mean Maguire's not set for a return to the NRL. Yeah, I'm pretty keen to get back in and obviously the selection of the club is a very important part of it. Keeping his family happy is another. But my kids enjoy the football and, you know, they're... They're into, into me every day about when I'm going back to coaching, so I think they want me out of the house. Despite the ongoing speculation, Wayne Bennett is still doing what he needs to do to keep his job, and that's winning. Going up for it, Corey Oates, what a catch! Up above them, the leaper, Oates has a hat-trick. Brisbane back in the winner's circle, beating the Bunnies 38-18 last night to shore up their finals hopes and push the Warriors back to eighth. But Bennett's still not happy. I can't win with you guys. You know, if I make no comment, you make me a headline. If I do make a comment, you still make me a headline. But that's the beauty of your job, you sit on the fence. A premiership victory would silence everyone. And back home, Port Moresby Netball Association played their second round of games for both juniors and seniors today. President Linda Ligo says currently the association is using the competition to make selections for this year's national titles to be hosted in Lee. Port Mosby Netball Association is currently preparing its juniors and senior players for this year's national titles to be hosted by Lay Netball Association. Being one of the biggest clubs with 146 plus teams, President Linda Ligo says a number of divisions ranging from under 13, under 15, under 17 and under 21 as well as seniors will be sent to Lay in September to attend the national titles. It's the second round and we're actually doubling up our games because of the exclusive closure due to APEC coming. So we're actually doubling up our games, which is round two, and they're playing game five and game six. So um, each of these teams are actually playing twice just to double up the games, and we'll finish off our last game next week. And our Premier Division are actually playing indoors. They're also doubling up the games. Okay, we have about, every Saturday we deal, we actually have 146 teams, of which 77 something is for the, is ju their junior teams, and um, 74 are senior teams. So we actually have around 146 plus teams. She says the event currently is used to identify its best talents for all divisions and will be prepared, ready to attend the Nationals come September. Selection on for the National Championship that is coming up in September next month. It's going to be hosted by Lay Association and we're actually, the selection's going on for the, um, the strongest team. We're trying to send our under 13s, under 17, 15s, 21s. Team, um, seniors A and B grade. They're all actually going back to defend their titles. 
Linda added while teams around the country are preparing for the national titles, Netball PNG will also be on the grounds during the championships to make selections for next year's Pacific Games in Samoa as well as the Under-21 World Cup qualifiers. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And the Ranchuka Sports up next with the details for the next 24 hours. True Kai Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast now in the southern region, mostly fun in Port Moresby and Daru. Rain drizzles in Kerama and Popandita and some rain showers in Alatau. In the Momase region, rain drizzles in Leh, cloudy with some rain in Well, mostly fine in Medang, Wewak and Vanimal. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine in Loringa with a top temperature of 30. In KVN, rain showers in Kokopo and Rabaul, rain showers as well. And also in Kimbe and Buka, rain showers. And in the Highlands region, drizzles and fog in Mount Hagen, partly cloudy in Goroka, Kundiawa, and fine with some fog in Mendi and Wabeg. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And before we go to AFL in the men's division, Kobonis have come out victorious in a match against West Eagles. Kobonis, who scored their first goal and led the first two quarters of the match before West Eagles took over in the third, but failed to maintain their lead as Kobonis came back strong in the last quarter to finish on top at full time with 68 points. In the men's division, West Eagles took on Cobonese in a dazzling match under the hot Port Mosby sun. Eagles first to take hold of the ball in the first quarter easily lost connection, but to find the ball in the hands of the Cobonese. With less mistakes, Cobonese knew exactly what to do with the ball and that was scoring their first goal. But it wasn't long before Eagles returned the favour to equalise the score. Both teams having equal take of the ball made it hard to score as forwards from each side struggled to keep the ball at a steady pace. But minutes before the first half, West Eagles managed to get hold of the ball to score three more goals, but Cobonis came back strong to lead the quarter. West Eagles came strong in the third quarter but failed to maintain their lead in the final quarter as Cobonis charged up their energy in the last quarter. In the end, it was the Cobonis that walked away victorious with 68 points win over the West Eagles. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And now here's a recap at tonight's main stories. Public in Morabe urged to report bad police behavior apart from crime. Mothers Association soon to sell produce to city shop shelves. And Hunter's coach confident of defending 2018 premiership. And that's the news, sport and weather for today, Saturday 18th of August 2018. On behalf of the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing and good night. <laughs>